next guest is an award-winning journalist we all know and love. In her new BET show, Disrupt and Dismantle, she takes a deeper look at systemic racism and the steps we can take to achieve lasting change. Check it out. Attacking the issues head on. Children are out here fighting for their lives. Making it right. Is it as simple as money? Yes, we need more funding. Real action. She was absolutely denied her basic human rights. Standing by is no longer an option. This shouldn't be happening, and it's just wrong. Disrupt and Dismantle, hosted by Soledad O'Brien. Wow, please welcome Soledad O'Brien, everybody! I literally, I literally just painted a, a hole in my living room that color because I think it's such a great, peaceful, great color. Right. Yeah. Kind of brightens everything up. You look beautiful. Thank it you. Is so likewise. lovely to meet you. And likewise. Yeah. And likewise. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh so, what made you want to do a show like this? You, you know, want to see change? Yeah. And I think we felt the time was right. I think in the the wake of the killing of George Floyd, mm -hmm. I noticed, and I think a lot of other people did too, that the conversation around race and racism was, was changing, that people across the board, not just black people, but all people were like, we need to figure this out. No, and it's actually a really important time, I think, to do it right now, because I think a lot of people that didn't know things are happening, like that you, you can't change them unless you know it exists, you know? Um, but you say it's, it's important to highlight how systems are often the root of injustice. So can you explain that? Yeah, well, systems are complicated, right? In a way, it's almost easier to say, well, that person did this and that person did this. But systems are big and overwhelming. And how do you think about the system that keeps people in an unequal plane. For example, my mom and dad came to this country. My mom was Afro-Cuban, black and Cuban. My dad was white and Australian. Mm -hmm. When they moved into their neighborhood, no one would sell them a house because they would not allow black people to move into the neighborhood. Wow. Like, that's a system, right? That's not even individuals. That's a system yeah. that changed over time. And so we wanted to both look at history, what put these systems in place, and then also look at, okay, well, if it's a system and it's big and complicated, I think there's a real tendency to be like, well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's overwhelming. overwhelming can't, yeah. I can't manage that by myself. And yeah. we wanted to show people how you could disrupt and dismantle systems, what specific things you could do. I actually love that about this because you're not only providing what the problems are, you're providing solutions, right? Yeah, and it's very easy to admire problems like, yeah, wow, that is bad. Yeah. That is depressing. But like, but what <laughs> the hell do you do? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so we wanted to provide a real, you know, a map. There are ways, and sometimes those ways are get involved in politics, mm. figure out zoning, understand who your elected officials are. Can you name them? Yeah. Do you have their numbers? What are yeah. your rights in terms of what you're trying to change in your community? Yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, one of the episodes focuses on infant mortality. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, you know, if you look at the disparity between black women and white women when it comes to maternal mortality and infant mortality. I actually have heard of this. The numbers yeah. are terrible. Black yeah. women are three to four times more likely, three to four times more likely to die in childbirth. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So we wanted to understand that. And what you really see pretty clearly, pretty quickly, is that there are these sort of racial and systemic racism that sort of influences outcomes for women and also their infants as well. The infant mortality numbers are terrible too. Mm. And so we wanted to explore what was happening around infant mortality. The stories are terrible and they go from mm. women not getting good access to health care, uh, women living in health care deserts where they're just not anywhere close to good places to get health care. Uh, and also a lot of black women reported doctors just not really listening to them. Them. There are lots of studies that say doctors and others believe black women have a higher tolerance for pain. So we were yeah. really interested in exploring well, what exactly is involved. Sometimes it's just access to, to better systems around funding for health care, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. we looked at this and thought, okay, here's the problem. It's fully documented. We know a lot of the reasons. How do you solve it? There was nothing unusual about Kim's pregnancy and the delivery was normal. Yet three days after giving birth, Kim's health took a drastic turn. Like she couldn't see well, and she kept having a lot of headaches. We had talked to this doctor about sending her to Memphis several times, trying to figure out what was going on with her. But he decided not to send her. So she continued to deteriorate. Wow. 
Welcome back. That was the clip from Disrupt and Dismantle, and I'm here with the host of the show, Soledad O'Brien. Give it up for everybody. So in that episode, Soledad examined the infant mortality rates in Mississippi. We have two of the women from that episode joining us right now. Everybody, please welcome sisters Natoya and Nikitra. Hi, ladies. Hi. Well, first of all, I have to start with this. You both look beautiful, all of the colors you're wearing, and your smiles are gorgeous. Oh, oh well, thank you. you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I was like, wow, y'all look like little lights on the, on the screen. Um, well, Natoya, <laughs> I'll, I'll start with you. You started researching infant mortality after losing your baby, right? Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, sure. So in February of 2016, um, I was about 25 weeks pregnant at the time, and I started experiencing some like upper quadrant pain. So fast forward, you know, we went to the emergency room. Of course, I was quickly seen, um, but in a matter of literally minutes, um, we were, you know, we realized that things were taking a turn for the worse. Um, I was told that I would be transferred to Jackson, Mississippi. Um, which is two hours away from Startville, and I would probably deliver there or stay there until delivery. And so I later found out that the University of Mississippi Medical Center is the only level four NICU in the state. And uh, two days later, I delivered Jordan via emergency C-section at 25 weeks, one day, weighing a whopping one pound and one ounce. Mm. Wow. And so after Jordan passed at eight months old, um, my husband and I started thinking about, you know, we knew that we couldn't prevent this from happening to another child, but if we could ease the burden of a family going through it, mm. then that's what, you know, we were like, maybe we were chosen for this path for a reason. And so what will we do going forward? And so um, in combination with the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi, we formed a family advisory board. And so it's made up of current NICU parents, former NICU parents, um, nurses, hospital administration, social workers. And we basically serve as a support for, you know, parents going through the NICU journey. That's amazing. I was literally going to say power in numbers, like making that, having that network of people that support from, from people, especially the professionals that you have in that, that network environment too, telling you, you know, from their expertise, this might be happening, this might be, you know what I'm saying? Like having that group to kind of go to. Um, Nikitra, you, you've looked at the infant mortality crisis from another perspective, right? Yeah, so I, I've been in public health for about 13 years now, and most of my career has been in sexual and reproductive health. And so when you think about reproductive health, that of course includes reproductive rights and pregnancy, labor, delivery. I kind of took my family lens off and started trying to look at this from a public health perspective because this wasn't just a strange turn of events for our family. It's happening across the country. And so I was trying to figure out how, how do we fix this? What do we do? And so I started looking at the system and that's where the issue lies. We can tell a woman to say, I'm hurting, um, I need this, I feel this way. But if a doctor is not listening to her, then that's a problem. If we have our moms healthy, then we can get our babies healthy. But in order to do that, we really have to address systemic racism and all of those barriers that keep a woman from being able to navigate that system of healthcare in a way that gets her out on the other side and gives her this great experience of childbirth. We, we always see childbirth in this, you know, this great experience, but it's so complex for black mothers mm -hmm. that we don't get that opportunity. And so that's the lens that I look at it from. That's what I'm, that's why it's unfortunate that doctors really don't listen because it is so different. Even with the same woman, my two pregnancies were very different. You have no idea mm -hmm. like what's what's happening. And it could be a, a plethora of, of things, you know, happening. So I, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I, I want to say this, though, um, Soledad, you, you see hope that the infant mortality rate can be reduced, right? Yeah. I look at these two sisters who could be doing a hundred other things and instead have decided to dedicate their lives to making change because they know it's not just their story. It's a story of a lot of black women, a lot of women and a lot of black women. Mm -hmm. And I think there's always hope when you have people first deciding to have a difficult conversation. What is the data? What are the facts? What do we know? In Mississippi, they track this now because people deserve to understand the data. Mm -hmm. And really, it's what our whole entire show is about. We deserve to understand the data. And after you do that, you can say, okay, now we know. Yeah. What do we do to change? 
Yeah, and how is information ever bad? And that's my thing, is like the more information we, the more conversations, the more information we have, the the more we can progress. Yeah. Thank you for doing what you're doing to help, you know, not only your family, but everyone, you're trying to to affect change. That ripple effect is going to hit everyone, not just your your family. So it's it's a really cool thing what you're doing. And and like Soledad said, thank you so much for taking the time to do that because you be, you could be doing anything with your lives. So this is really important. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, everybody, Disrupt and Dismantle airs Wednesdays on BET. Yep, I'm still here, just waiting for you to subscribe. If you don't, I'll be trapped in this box forever. <laughs>